your brother, your friend, your dietitian back again for another installment in spirit, nutrition. My experience living abroad as a black man, as a more, as a original man, etc. People call themselves different things um, nowadays, but um, how to, how my experience living abroad, specifically in Guatemala um, as a black man, I've only lived abroad or traveled abroad I guess you could say three times in my life I'm blessed to say that and I'm grateful to be able to say that um, and each time I was away for about a month more more or less Macho Menos first time I was in uh, India which was the most intense crazy experience and then um, I have some videos in my archives uh, dealing with like those are really candid videos in the spot like at restaurant, <clears throat> excuse me, at restaurants, um, at little lot uh, inns and lodges, and just you know, in the moment, recording, and then Guatemala, and then Mexico, and also went back to Guatemala another time. So my experience in Guatemala, you know, as a so-called black man and just international. First off, I want to say like. It's true. A lot of us don't travel. Every time, every time I left the country, I haven't seen a lot of people that look like me that were Americans. So I've seen people that look like me in Guatemala, in Mexico, and in even in India, but they weren't African American. They weren't black, quote unquote. Um, but my experience varied. But I do want to say the first thing that I experienced was when you see European people, people of Caucasian descent, you kind of can tell which ones are from America and which ones are from Europe or from New Zealand or from Australia or from somewhere outside of America. The first part, or South Africa, the first primary way to tell is they don't look nervous around you. Um, the reason is, is nothing against my European American, Caucasian American, you know, whatever you want to call them, friends or people that I know or viewers that live in America it's just that we have this crazy obsessive concept of race which is an illusion that goes on in America and so um, you have a situation where even in foreign countries or not even in America in people's neighborhoods or at the mall you can tell they look nervous around you they look they give you that that fake smile and they're kind of concerned like oh or they look shocked when they see you like what are you doing here just like when i go to certain neighborhoods and travel they're kind of looking like uh in america they're looking like you know what are you doing here they're surprised to see me but if you see um somebody from sweden or you see somebody from england or you see someone from russia or from germany they don't look nervous they don't give you a fake smile sometimes they won't even pay attention to you or if they do smile it's an actual real smile it's not um just like a BS smile. Um, that's one thing I noticed. Uh, another thing that I noticed is that traveling to Guatemala specifically, um, people are kind of fascinated with you, kind of uh, interested in who you are. Um, uh, they don't see a lot of us traveling. Um, and so when they see you, they're kind of like, just curious, like looking at you, just kind of staring at you and trying to figure you out. But luckily I could speak a lot of the language when I traveled in Latin America. So as soon as people would kind of stare at me or kind of look at me and try to figure me out, I would say, buenas tardes. I would say, buenas noches or como esta? I would you'd be really boisterous <clears throat> and uh, not always. Sometimes I would just smile or just keep going on doing my thing, depending on how I felt. But I would talk to people, you know, um, you know, como están ustedes? Y, uh, you know, feliz día or whatever. I would just talk to them. So that kind of made them, that kind of dispelled their kind of like views of me kind of being like, who is this foreigner? They kind of looked at me like, hmm, maybe he's from uh, Honduras or maybe he's from Cuba or maybe he's from a different country or maybe he's just some random, you know, brother traveling. Um, another thing I noticed was that it wasn't really personal. It's just more like you're foreign. So they're kind of looking at you like, hey, um, you know, what's the difference between me and him? He looks different, you know, 
does he talk different does he think different so they kind of look at you um another thing that i noticed though is that like there's this fashion <clears throat> sometimes there's this fascination with like europeans uh when you travel and um it's a historical thing i don't want to get all into it about um you know colonization and um imperialism and the relationship that europe has with a lot of different uh, countries um there's like this like view because of like um you know uh the relationship the kind of i guess how can you say it um paternalistic kind of relationship between Europeans and other countries and their colonies and things like that um, so they kind of like look up to Europeans um, and if they're not looking up to them they see them as like the tourists you know what I mean and they see them kind of like oh uh, look at them like they're tourists but when they see you sometimes they say oh you're a gringo or sometimes they'll think oh you're you know a black guy you know he's a Yankee or whatever but a lot of time when I experienced I felt like a brother because I didn't get a bunch of funny you know hey you know tourist stand out blonde hair blue eye white guy caucasian guy uh it was like more so like he's one of us like he's a brother and i acted like a brother i behaved like a brother so i caught the you know the but the the 10 cent buses and the 25 cent buses and i you know i caught the uh the chicken buses with them those are the those are actually used u.s school buses that they retrofitted and changed uh some of them they didn't even change and they just fill them up so you get these bus these school buses that are made for children granted this the the guatemala people are small but the school buses are made for children so they're tiny uh in terms of the space that you have and then the seats don't have seat belts so um the seats don't have seat belts in American buses either, but the buses in Guatemala, they drive way crazier. And there's chickens on the bus sometimes, and people bring their goods on the buses, and it's just crazy. It gets really packed. Um, but I would ride those like a brother, you know what I mean? I wouldn't catch the tourist uh, buses and things like that, um, air-conditioned tourist buses. I would just catch the bus that all the regular Guatemalans were, 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 were catching. And um, I would just talk to them like they were my brother. Um, and I would say, somos hermanos, a lot. You know, um, somos iguales. We're the same, we're brothers. So um, that was my experience, it was a kinship experience. Um, but also, with the ladies, you know, at the time, uh, I went dancing a couple times, but to be honest, I was practicing uh, sexual discipline. I was, um, you know, just enjoying myself in terms of enjoying the trip. Um, but, uh, I didn't really deal with like dating or you know um, uh, any type of intimacy with anyone from uh, different different um, different country or from Guatemala at the time. There was one young lady who was interested. Uh, she was really intrigued and she was trying to you know move things forward. But I wasn't. That wasn't my objective there when I came. Um, and I was only there for a month, so I didn't want to you know spark any flames and then leave it. Just leave it. You know um, with nothing nothing happening. Uh, so I left that alone and she seemed kind of like I heard some news about her I heard she just liked to you know deal with foreigners in general just to get the experience but it was nothing serious so um yeah that was that man um the last thing I think I want to say um about traveling to Guatemala uh as a as a black man as a more um is that I had experience where there was a brother who owned a cafe that also produced um I had like a theater, kind of like a room where he, he, he had like a dollar, like dollar movies, old American movies um, that he could watch, that like foreigners would come and watch. Um, they didn't have anything to do, I guess that night, instead of going to like a Guatemalan theater, they would go there and watch old movies. And he asked me like, how come more black people don't travel? Also, I always, that's one question I always get when I travel is how come more of you guys don't travel? We only see white people. We only see this, these kind of people. How come more of you guys don't travel? And I tell them some people don't have opportunity. Some people don't make it a priority. Some people don't want to travel. I always tell them that. But um, there's a lot of us out there that are traveling now. And so I told them, you know, there's more of us. But basically, he was asking, um, do black people behave the way they behave in the films that he has in his in his library con collection and he was kind of joking because he he was a wise guy he was an intelligent guy he knew okay the depiction on television the depiction on the films aren't the same as how you know it is in the country but he was still just curious i mean he had never been there so he didn't know so i told him i said no man that's probably like 
and he 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 brought up um like menace to society boys in the hood like it was like new jack city like it was just ridiculous films like you know go of us pictures depictions of us going hard in these films and so he's asking are they like this and i told him it's about you know less than five percent of us that that behave like that on a day-to-day -day basis so um no the answer is no that's not how we behave um and so yeah that was my experience man traveling um out there in terms of being going as a black man uh, as a more but what i would honestly say is that we have to transcend um you know prescribed um limits because we're of this race or that race like the women I've dealt with, like, when I went to Mexico, I met some beautiful, amazing women. Um, and they dealt with spirituality. They dealt with, you know, the Aquarian age, being in the information age. They dealt with, you know, vegetarian, eating, living, free living, abundance lifestyle, you know. And that doesn't come just because of a race. That, that becomes, that comes because of who you are and your vibration. So, and your frequency. So, what I, I feel is that we get caught up in race because we come from a society that's obsessed with race but i think that we need to transcend the illusion of race when really we're all human beings and i don't mean that to say we're all human beings everybody should be treated equally well they should be but not i'm trying to say like there's no difference i'm not trying to say there's no difference between us um and everyone should just forget about the culture that that identifies them i'm not trying to say that i'm just trying to say like it shouldn't be a divisive issue it should be something that's embraced so um you know actually that let me add to that they would call me um ah i forgot what they would call me but um colochos i think colochos i think it's colochos but they would call me um colochos because uh i had like my hair was shorter at the time but i had like little curls um and um uh, they would call me, you know, Morenito, and they would call me little, like, sweet things out, because out in Latin America, you, they, people call you names based off of sometimes how you look, uh, like Gordita, or um, Morenito, or Cafecito, or whatever, they'll call you different names based how, off of how you look, but it's like endearing terms, so I had some nice, you know, comments about that, too, when I was traveling, but what I'm just trying to say is that we're more than just our race, if you just bound yourself to your race, or you only have idols mentors people from your race you're limiting yourself like what if you want to be um an astrophysicist but um you didn't know any black af astrophysicists or you didn't you hadn't heard of any but there's other paragons there's other nice people that you could you know model yourself off of now i think to get to that level you have to understand that you have to understand yourself and race as a concept uh, before you can get to that level because then you'll, you, if you're not psychologically developed, you may start praising other people and thinking that, okay, because they're of that race, they're astrophysicists. But if you develop beyond that and say, whatever that, like, for example, Elon Musk is one of my idols and heroes, but in my mind, it's whatever that man can do, I can do, regardless of race. Now, if you're underdeveloped, you may say, oh, he can do that because he's white or he's from South Africa or he had opportunities or whatever. And that may negatively affect you. But if you're advanced, you could say, I can find idols in all races, in all places. So, uh, uh, Nehru, Jawaharlal Jar Nehru, the first prime minister of India. He's one of my idols, and he's Indian, right? Um, Sir Faisal um, Abel Ahmed, I think his name is. He's from Bangladesh. He's one of my heroes. Um... Who else? Uh, the Dalai Lama. Um, uh, there's a lot of different people. Yogananda. Uh, you know, Swami Yogananda. Um, Noble Draw Ali. Marcus Garvey. Um, you know, Fidel Castro. Uh, you know, Hugo Chavez. There's a lot of people from different places, different races that can become your hero, that you can become your idol, um, and that promote love and, and strength and fortitude or whatever. Um, Paulo Freire. Uh, Paulo Coelho, uh, like so, just because they're not your race, you can't limit your, you can't limit yourself that way. Um, and so, when you travel, it's the same way. You can't limit yourself because, oh, this person is not black, or because I'm black. 
I can't limit, I'm limited in, in what I can do or I'm limited in how people would treat me. Nah, don't be limited by that. The women will treat you fine. You know what I mean? You'll vibrate with the women that vibrate with you. Like I said, I met this beautiful Mexican sister and like we just really vibing, but I didn't vibe with all the Mexican sisters. It was just the one that vibrated with me. So it all depends on, um, it all depends on you, man. And so go out, travel, enjoy yourself. Um, and, and, and don't really trip about um, how people treat you. Just worry about how you treat yourself. All right, your brother, your friend, your dietitian, back again for another installment. Peace and blessings.